Hello everyone, we're going to be doing page 17 for our notes. And so down here on the bottom right, I'm going to write a 17. So this is on the right hand side of our notes. Over here we have page 16. And it's on the back side of our density notes. So we are going to go on to our next unit. So we're on unit three right now. Uh, it's an, actually a really fun unit. It's um, properties of matter. And generally, that's just saying this is what makes things what they are. And it also tells us what they react with. So we get to do some chemical reactions with this. So at the top, we need to set up our Cornell notes. So the first thing we should do is draw our lines. So we do one down the side and then two across the top. And then we have our one over here. And I'm going to put Mr. Will, but you need to put your name up here in the top right corner. So I'll put Mr. Will. And it will be the first for when I'm making these anyway. <laughs> um, we need to have a title. Uh, we're going to title this Properties of Matter. Properties of Matter. In our essential question, our EQ is how do we identify identify things? That's the question we're going to try and answer with our notes today. So we have properties of matter. And our first vocab word is physical properties. So let's start with up here. physical properties or property. And then I remember I have my dash and that's my invisible line. So that my definition is going to stay on the right hand side of that. Now again that's a smaller space so I could cut in a little bit but I definitely don't want to go to the beginning over here and do my definition. So my definition for a physical property is anything that can be observed or measured without changing the material itself. So let's write that. So anything that can be Oh, I switched around. Whatever. Measured or observed without changing the material. And we'll find out in a minute that if I did change that material, it would be called a chemical property or a chemical reaction because something has changed. So that's a physical property. I'm going to go ahead and underline that. That is my vocab word. And this is my definition. Now there's a lot we need to add to physical property because there's a lot of ways that we can determine whether something's a physical property or not. So one of the ways is with our senses. So now this is still technically under a physical property. So I don't want to start a whole another line or anything. So I'm going to just kind of indent it a little bit. So I have my senses, which include what I can see, touch, smell, taste, or hear. 
Now in the lab, we are not going to taste anything because that's one of our rules. Uh, but we can definitely see, touch, and smell or even hear different things that might d tell us that it's something different. So if I were to tap a glass versus plastic, they're a different sound from each other. And so I might be able to determine what some of those physical properties are. Another way besides senses is measurement. So by doing a measurement, I can also get some properties. So I could find the length of something or the volume, the mass, and most importantly, the density. That tells me a lot of information. So that's that. And then we want some examples. So some examples of a physical property are color, or the shape of something, or states, uh, whether it's a magnet or not, the melting point, boiling point. Uh, so melting point is where something melts, what temperature, and that's specific to a certain material. Or the boiling point, so we know water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. We know that. And if something were to boil at that temperature, we could guess that it's probably water. Because if we were to boil uh, alcohol, for example, like rubbing alcohol, it boils at a much lower temperature. And so if it boiled sooner than 100 degrees Celsius, we're like, oh, that can't be water. So it's really helpful. Uh, malleability, that's whether something can bend or um, kind of... Uh, squish or um, like if I were to hit a soup can, it kind of dents in, that's malleability. And then ductility is whether it can turn into kind of like a wire. Some things can't hold that shape, like chalk, I can't turn that into a wire. That would be really difficult or impossible. So let's write some of these down. So we have color, shape, state, that's liquid, solid, gas, those sort of thing. A magnet, melting point, boiling point, sorry this is a G, it's an N, boiling point, malleability, whether it is malleable. Okay, and ductility. This is not whether it is a duck, it is whether it can turn into a wire form. Wait, ductility. Oh, I spelled that wrong. It's an L. It's close enough. All right. So that is it for a physical property. So that's a lot of stuff. I get that. Uh, so we've got our definition, and we've got ways that we can tell whether it's a physical property, and then some examples. Now we need to go on to chemical properties. So a chemical property is anything about a substance that allows it to change into a new substance. So let's write that down. Anything about a substance. So a substance is like a material. Anything about that material or substance that allows it to change into a new substance. And that is the important part. So it allows it to change into that new substance. So let's name some examples.
of what would happen for a chemical property. So whether it is flammable. So flammability. Whether it reacts with water or air or vinegar. We know about that one. Or, I mean, we could keep going. Electricity. Whether some light hits it. Or heat. Now, those last two, for light, uh, our medicine, they're in a special container. That's usually that yellow container for those special medicines. Um, that is actually to protect it from light. And you are supposed to store it in a dry um, room temperature environment. So if they get too hot or if they are exposed to light, they could change into a different chemical composition because it's a chemical change now. It's a new substance and it might not do what it's supposed to do. It could be um, not as effective or it could be too effective and it could actually hurt you. So that's why it's important to follow those instructions. All right, so now we have physical and chemical properties, but what about physical and chemical changes? So that's our next set. So physical change. We underline that. So physical change is one that does not change the chemical makeup or does not change chemically. I like that better. I think there's two L's then. So it does not change chemically. It just physically changes, which is pretty obvious, right? But let's do some examples. So crumpling paper. or freezing water, or even boiling. Boiling water, H2O I'll put there. Um, the paper is still paper, it's just a different shape. Um, modeling clay. I think there's two L's in there. So if I were to squish a piece of clay, it's still clay, it's just in a different shape. So it's physically changed, but it's still the same stuff. Which brings us to our next one, which is a chemical change. And these are way more interesting. All right, so for our definition, it's a change in the chemical makeup of the substance. So I'm going to actually just change that to changes into a new substance because it's not the same thing anymore. It has changed chemically. Some examples, we have, or, well, those are common reactions. So we could do apples rotting or Iron rusting. That's a G. And we can see some signs. Some signs of a chemical change. We will see bubbling. 
and we'll see heat sometimes, or we could see light even for those chemiluminescent reactions. Sometimes there's smoke, which honestly might not be a good thing. Um, color change, and that's not always the case because if I put Kool-Aid in water, it's not really a chemical change or sound. Because it's still water and Kool-Aid, it's just they're kind of swirling around together. It's not quite the same. And then finally, there's the difference. And I maybe I tried to put too much on one page. Oh goodness. Let's just try and fit it. So we've got chemical change equals something new. I think that's the biggest part. All right, so that is a full page. Um, I'm hoping you guys can fit it all on there. Squish it together if you have to. Um, but yeah, so this is page 17, properties of matter, talking about physical and chemical properties and physical and chemical changes. And then we'll get into some other examples of all of these things and how we identify different parts of matter, I guess.